Hola, ¿me escuchan? Muy buenos días. Uh, muchas gracias por escucharme. Les pido perdón porque no hablo muy bien español y mi portuñol es terrible. Entonces lo voy a hacer uh, en inglés y si alguien tiene cuestiones, dudas, después voy a estar por ahí. Por eso, mil perdones por eso. Uh, good morning, uh, everyone. It is a great pleasure to be here. I can't wait to meet all of the startups uh, outside. The presentation I have for you today um, has got one main message that I want to stuck with you. That message is that I firmly believe that impact, social and environmental impact, is the biggest economic opportunity of our times. And what I'm going to explain in the next 10 minutes is what is the rationale behind this idea. A bit of context before. So 10 years ago, I founded Maze. You can see the team at Maze here. Maze is an impact investment firm that is based in Lisbon, Portugal, and working across all of Europe. Over the last 10 years, we have mobilized more than 300 million euros in impact investment. We've supported more than 500 entrepreneurs and 200 impact startups across a lot of countries. And we manage an impact venture capital fund with 45 million euros that has invested in 37 companies across all of Europe, including, including Spain. Before that, I was working in Social Finance UK uh, in London, which is a global leader on impact investment. So I've basically dedicated all of my professional life to investing in businesses that profit, so that generate revenues while they are solving social and environmental problems. Okay? I'll say this again because it's a very important idea. I have dedicated most of my life to investing, putting money in businesses that profit by solving social and environmental problems. This is different from a lot of businesses that generate revenues by taking advantage of those problems. These companies are what we call lockstep ventures. So a lockstep venture is a company that has profit and impact together. They are mutually reinforcing. You cannot have revenues without having impact. You cannot having impact without having revenues. We can put it in another way, meaning that whatever drives the revenues of the company will help solve a social issue, will help people to have better well-being, will help people that are excluded from the education system to have access to education. And these lockstep ventures are very important because when you have an impact startup like this that grows, the impact grows as well with the revenues of the company. So you cannot grow a company and at some point say, I want to have less impact because impact is what makes the business work. And now what I would love to, would love to share with you is how these impact ventures win. Why do I think that investing in these businesses is the future? And why do I think the future is today? And these companies have four advantages that other companies do not have. The first one is, and if you have the entrepreneurs in the room and the investors in the room, investors love to talk about total addressable markets, TAM. The first advantage that they have is that they are tackling very big social and environmental challenges. Most of you have probably heard about the 17 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. If you look at those UN Sustainable Development Goals, you will find big markets underneath those Sustainable Development Goals. In total, they cost the global economy $10 trillion a year. We're talking about climate change, health and well-being, life on, on water, all the UN SDGs that you can think of. Food waste, so the food that goes to waste, costs the global economy $1 trillion every year. So if we have a business that can address and reduce food waste and generate revenues through that business model, we not only have a great business, we also have a business that does great things 
for the environment and we know many of them like too good to go for instance the second advantage is because consumers want impact a lot of consumers are making their purchasing decisions aligned with their values they are scrutinizing the type of products that they buy and they want to take into account impact criteria when buying that product they want to remove plastic they want to buy more sustainably so it is not by chance that most of the fast-moving consumer good companies like Unilever or Procter and Gamble have been the first movers on this to remove plastic from packaging to pay fair trade to suppliers because these are the companies that consumers scrutinize the first so of course affordability is a challenge but price parity is arriving across industries and of course uh, impact can be an enabler of a better net promoter score for the entrepreneurs in the room that know very well what this means the third advantage is because it's what talent wants and I see a lot of young people young people that are super equipped to join the labor market do not want for work for companies that do not have a purpose young talent wants to work for impact young talent wants to work for companies that have a purpose so companies that attract this talent will be more productive will have a lower uh, turnaround that's also why a lot of management consulting companies a lot of banks a lot of technology companies have this narrative join us be the change you want to see in the world because they want this narrative to resonate with talent and the last advantage the fourth advantage is we are seeing a big shift in wealth in capital and Millennials are inheriting the biggest wealth transfer of all times in history and Millennials and Gen Z want to invest with impact so what we have is the preference of the new generation of investors to invest in impact projects and in impact solutions so all these four unfair advantages all together encompass what the rationale for uh, economic opportunities we like to think of these as the preferences of the two-thirds there's two-thirds of consumers that want to pay for sustainable products there's two-thirds of the new talent that wants to join impact companies and there are two-thirds of Millennials that want to invest in, a, in impact so if we bring all of these together we have a, a very important economic equation that proves why it is so uh, benefit to invest in in impact if companies that are addressing big social and environmental challenges are operating in big markets they can build something very important for investors that Maria was alluding to which is defensibility how can companies create something that is really differentiating if companies attract consumers that are more engaged the unit economics that Maria also talked about will be much better right we're talking about lower acquisition costs of cons customers and higher lifetime value for every customer that they deal with and if impact companies can attract the best talent they will be more productive and their talent will be retained in the company so all of this together means that companies that are focused on impact versus companies that do not care about impact these companies that focus on impact have access to capital at a much lower cost and we have seen that in our portfolio companies like Kitsch that we exited to Glovo when Glovo was looking for opportunities in the energy efficient space they looked at a company that had impact at its core hence why they've selected Kitsch from from our from our portfolio so what does this mean for investors so for investors like us at Maze and for impact investors it means that it is not enough to say oh we are impact investors we need to link the way we are paid as investors to the impact that we have in our portfolio and in our companies for instance one of the things that we do is that we are only remunerated as a fund manager if the impact performance of our portfolio is above a certain percentage so for each company in which we invest 
we define impact metrics and goals and our remuneration is linked uh, accordingly. For the policy makers that we have in the room, it is the best, the best time to have progressive policies and to mobilize impact capital. That can be done through tax incentives for investors that invest in impact startups. It can be by having impact criteria in public procurement, so when the government buys products and services to have impact into consideration, or it can be to having co-investment facilities with local investors, like happens uh, here in the region, and that was shown uh, before. For the entrepreneurs out there, and I know that there are a lot of entrepreneurs um, in the room and, and outside, there has never been a better time to build a business and to make it uh, an impact business. We've seen a presentation on artificial intelligence. The use cases of uh, artificial intelligence for impact are huge. It is artificial intelligence and other technologies that are going to change the world, that are going to decarbonize the economy, that are going to provide access to those that cannot afford to have access to certain products. So the age of impact entrepreneurship is certainly starting and it's the perfect time to build a business. So if you have a business idea that you believe can tackle and solve a social or an environmental challenge, go for it. You'll probably hear a lot of no's throughout your journey, but remember that after the last no, there's always a yes, and it's after that yes that the world and the future of the world depends. Thank you very much for listening.